The Sufra Hills volcano on the island of Montserrat began to erupt on July 18th of 1995. Little did I know when I went up to the crater to shoot some shots to show my kids that it would turn into my being the documentarian of this 15 year long eruption. When the mountain went into a time of quiet, which the scientists call repose, I thought, what else could we do with the volcanoes in the Caribbean region? Maybe we could sail up through the islands. Maybe we could climb them, but that would require a boat. On a visit to Seba, I saw the perfect ship, and I met Captain Karsten Borner and his best mate, Karen. They were from Germany, and they usually chartered in the Red Sea or the Mediterranean, but they were visiting the Caribbean. I shared the vision with them, and the plan was birthed. When I got back to Montserrat, we have a volcano list, an internet list of all these volcano people from all over the world. 18 of them signed up for the adventure. We met in Grenada, and for the next 21 days, we sailed up and through the islands and climbed all of the major volcanoes. You're about to see a documentary about that. We sat down because of COVID, we're all closed down, we can't do anything else. My son and I decided maybe we should edit that 24 hours of footage into the documentary you're about to see. If you like what we've done and you'd like to donate, or donate to other projects we might get involved in in the future, stick around to the end of the film and we'll show you how to do that. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy the volcanoes of the Caribbean and sail with us on the topsail schooner Sir Robert Baden-Powell. Rob's hard to get though, he moves too fast. Well, got... What do you think of this hike, Fossey? It's beautiful. Gus. Oh. Here's to everybody. Hey, man. Yeah, I got it. Oh. <laughs> Beth. David, it puts you back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Layers, and that looks like pyroclastic material. Yamaha, because that's what's right behind your head. Smile, though, you gotta smile one time. Mm. Not bad champagne, though. That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> uh, first, I want to welcome you and thank God we're all here. I mean, every one of us has a story, I'm sure. Uh, the, how we got here and how we were delayed and where the luggage is, but um, hopefully today if we can get those three pieces of luggage um, That's really really gonna help. Ooh, and there is toast uh -huh. uh, So I want to welcome you and you've all met Karsten carrying the garbage bag though <laughs> He's <laughs> a man of all trades and um, Basically what I think we're gonna try to do today and we'll continue to maybe as a group make some decisions. But uh, because of the three pieces of lost luggage, um, we'll try to wait till at least noon and give it a few opportunities for flights to arrive. They come in at 9, 9.15, 9.30, another one at 11. 
so that's sort of where we're at today. And if we can pull it together sometime after noon, one, two, we will set sail uh, for St. Vincent and passing the Grenadines on the way up. Now, as far as the whole itinerary goes, um, St. Vincent is the island I'm least familiar with out of all of them. The other ones I've spent quality time and I've done some hiking into the volcanoes, helicopter rides, all kinds of stuff. So uh, what I sort of felt is maybe the first day we arrive somewhere, I'll go about making preparations for the next day. Individually, you guys can decide what you want to do. There are some divers, there's some people that want to snorkel, there's some people may want to go to the town or uh, something like that individually, get settled in on that particular island. And then um, the next day, if we do a hike, which we can do, I think, in St. Vincent, I'll have that all arranged for the second day. And then that, that evening, we will sail. Usually, we'll be sailing at night. One of the things that we're going to try to do, and this I need your feedback on, in Montserrat, my home, uh, the governor wants to have a reception, a get-together and a party for everyone on the ship and all of the scientists that come in every six months to reevaluate the situation of the volcano. Um, Steve Sparks, uh, Barry Voigt, all of those names that any of you in ge geological or volcanological circles would know uh, will come in. I think there's probably eight or ten scientists come in from all over the world with different expertise and they reevaluate everything that's taken place and they sort of try to figure out where we're going to go from here in Montserrat. And uh, they're all going to be there for three days of meetings. Uh, last time it was in Trinidad, they keep having it in different places. This time they're having it back in Montserrat. So they'll be ending their three days of meetings on the 2nd of December. And the governor thought it would be great if all of them, while they're still on island, most of them are going to be heading out the next day, would also get together with everybody on the ship and have a, a party or a reception at his house. He will probably invite some other people uh, from the island too, the chief minister or whoever that might be. So if we're going to do that, <laughs> if we want to make that, and I think it would be a fantastic opportunity and time, and especially for those that are in geological fields to get together with, with those you might have heard about. I know Professor Sparks is pretty well known these days. We'd lose a day someplace and we'd have to spend one day in one location. Now that might be St. Lucia. That might be a place where we could go in. You're going to be in one of the finest ports. It's a lot like here. It's just gorgeous in St. Lucia. It's beautiful right on the water. Uh, maybe just check the town out, check the city out, and if we can arrange a helicopter flight we could do that and pick up that day. Uh, in Martinique, we'll be met by the head of the observatory, uh, Jean-Pierre Viaud. I don't know how you pronounce it, V-I-O-D-E. He's been there quite some time as the head of the observatory. Hello, you want a coffee, Carolyn? <laughs> and uh, he's good friends. Uh, I've stayed at the observatory there for quite a few days and made the hike up to, uh, to Pele up the mountain. It's, a, it's one of the hikes I think we should try to make, those that are into it. And it's an incredible scene, and those that don't know, that's where 30,000 people were killed in just a few minutes in the uh, town of San Pierre. We'll be right in the harbor of San Pierre. Also, uh, the head of the observatory, I hope we can get the video because Cousteau and his crew uh, did a lot of beautiful uh, videography, film probably. On, that, uh, on those wrecks right underneath where we were. The fact those wrecks are there because they were anchored where we'll be anchored when the mountain erupted and the pyroclastic flows came out over the sea and uh, sunk everybody. Uh, the one that's the most popular, I think, actually stayed till the next morning before it, it sunk. There's a lot of good books there. The a, a museum is fantastic. The city, you could spend literally weeks just in San Pierre. I just think it's the most beautiful place in the Caribbean and very cosmopolitan. It's like you're in, um, in France. So we'll be going to Martinique and Jean-Pierre, I've been in touch with him up to like two days ago and he was going to come over and sail with us. Through the, he loves, he sails, he has his own sailboat. 
and he wanted to sail from St. Lucia over, but he can't do it, but he will meet and come and have dinner and tell us all about the eruption, take us to the observatory, which is state of the art. It's an amazing observatory and a nice museum there and then uh, probably send somebody with us if we want to go up to the crater. And we can hike up halfway too. They have different um, uh, seismographs and stuff halfway up. I've been up there with them. And if you want to make the last trek, it's another hour straight up to the crater. Grenada is known for its many spices. So our group decided to take a visit to the nutmeg factory. And over here, that's how the machine breaks the nut, the shell from the nut. Crack it. Whatever nuts that all come from the shell, you send it back upstairs to the machine, like us. Okay, so when you see now, when the machine doing the cracking of the shell, when we're doing the drying process, What's happening to the mace here? This is the end result and this is the highest grade. On to the Seven Sisters Falls. You get a free stick. What do you what do you call them, Brian? Columbia jointed flows, where you have a cooling joints, which they uh, cool in a hexagonal shape. Uh -huh. You see these columns. There's actually, there's a good one coming in from the airport. That's amazing. That would have been it would have cooled vertically. So that makes them like a column. Yes. So they call them. And they crack out like honeycomb. Like organ pipes. Like, yes. Like organ pipes. So you can see the, the flow lines and the lava flow, the striations on the surface. And then as it cooled, it cracked perpendicular to the cooling surfaces. So you get these hexagonal columns. Mm -hmm. Like honeycomb. Uh, no, it was, it was, and the children were very small, so I had to dress them. At sunrise the next morning, we set off for the island of St. Vincent.
Now we're starting the hike up to Soufrere and St. Vincent. And uh, we're just beginning and it takes about an hour and a half to two to get up there. Do we have to go to the top of Mount Soufrere to get to the crater rim? I don't believe so. Uh -huh. No, the, the, pla the place we're going is 3,050. Yeah, Richmond Peak would be a peak above that, but the, okay. the uh, crater is at 3,000, I believe. That's a good shot. Boy. Well, we just hiked up on our volcano cruise, uh, 3,053 feet to the very uh, edge of the crater at La Soufrere, volcano in St. Vincent. Uh, we're not at the highest point, that's another 700 feet, although I look up here and see uh, somebody has climbed that last little bit and is up on the ridge. But uh, it's pretty impressive to uh, look down into this crater, which must be a kilometer or maybe a mile across. And the dome that uh, grew up after the eruption of 1979 with still some fumaroles coming up off the side is pretty impressive. And we're seeing growth here that's come since that eruption. And on the sides of the volcano, uh, even more growth than we see down in here. But it's uh, a real privilege to stand up here on a day like this when we can look right in. Many people make this climb and never get to see the views that we're seeing today. So it's pretty impressive with a nice dome in the center, one of these volcanic domes, the last thing to form. And you see it's all cracked up. As it comes up, it's very glassy. Um, and as it does rise, it's, it, the glass then shrinks, and then it cracks, and then it falls, falls off to the sides. And that's the last thing. So the, the, as I understand it, there was a, a, uh, an eruption, and the eruption probably went out that, that way, right down that, that particular coast over there. And then it sealed itself off, probably with some explosive activity, maybe even dropped down a little bit. There could even be a little bit in here of uh, sort of a, a, of a minor sort of little caldera, a small one, at the top of the, of the, of the eruption center. And then it, the last sticky stuff, which had uh, it lost most of its vapor, its water primarily, a little bit of CO2 and H2SO4. And when it loses that, then it becomes stickier, becomes more viscous, so it doesn't flow, and it, therefore it chills faster, and you get the glass. And so often in these eruptions, the last thing you see then is a, is a dome, which then tries to build back up. Sometimes there are spines, like at Pele they were. Here it's just a nice broken fragmental dome. Centers, and then you get a nice annular thing around the edges, which you have the, the water in the lake, a little lake down there now. These are... It looks like the earliest eruptions in this in this particular area were lava flows. So there's one, two, three. You can see that they come and go. They some pinch out one way, some the other, because they would have been erupting probably off the flanks of this volcano. So you're looking at sort of valley sides as they would they, in the cross section of some of these as they would go down off on the slope of the volcano off away from us. And so then they thicken and thin and and uh, they continue on up. So it looks like there's flows, and most of what I've seen, they look like andesite flows with uh, phenocrysts of, of fairly glassy plagioclase and some hornblende, but not much else. And the rest of the matrix is fairly fine-grained to even glassy in some cases. And then above that, what you see, the lava flows stop, and then you see what looks like finer grain layers, and that looks like pyroclastic material. So it looks like now we're starting to get from there up to the top, sort of finer grain pyroclastic. You don't really see any of these nice big thick, sticky flows anymore. Just layers of ash and, and cinders that were blown out, some fragments. Maybe they would have also contributed to some lahars down on the flank, so as they would have been swept away. And so that's what seems like it in this particular area. Um, obviously, you look at the high, high peaks part over there that look like lava flows once again that you're getting up above. So that area over there probably has a slightly different character of uh, eruption just because the different centers are active for a while and then another one comes up and so you get a whole series of these things. But most seem to be andesite, which is what you expect for these kinds of, of uh, volcanoes right along the Benioff zones. and so. 
andesites, probably basaltic andesites, maybe even a couple of basalts thrown in there. So more of the mafic intermediate type of, of uh, volcanic rocks, and not so much of the felsic where you get the pyroclastic flows and, and uh, welded tufts and things of that sort. There's a lot of olivine, olivine basalt you can see yeah, and float. Sure, sure, sure. Now I suspect those black layers up there may be olivine basalts, because apparently the oh, latest... Look here, look, they almost look like just they um, look pretty, ashy stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. ash, basaltic ash, but olivine basalts, because um, supposedly in the literature they say the latest eruptions were olivine basalts, and you see a lot of that float down the slope there, and those black layers look like that might be the source of it. And it looks like this side has suffered a lot. This part of this has been eroded out or blasted out, as you can see these nice flows dipping off down the side there. And this big valley here, with some later ash flows in it. Well, that's just uh, some erosion that was then filled with some younger ash flows, or whether it's actually been partly blasted out of that now. Well, it's a beautiful textbook volcano. It was worth the climb? Absolutely. <laughs> Olivine and, and paroxene. It's, um, now you just found that on the crater's edge here? Just found yeah. it on the crater rim. Can you what what is what? The white is plagioclase, yeah. felspar, and the black is pyroxene, possibly with also iron oxide. And then there's a golden mineral, which is we think olivine. Amazing. And the rock is a gabbro. That's so you had you had to chip something to see that though, right? You see olivine yeah. now? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's very it's little affected yeah. by weathering. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, absolutely fresh. <laughs> yes, okay, we made it! Whoa. After departing St. Vincent, we headed for the island of St. Lucia, well known for its spectacular pitons. We're looking at the two pitons, which must be old volcanic spines that are partly eroded away. Then, further across to the left, we, we see the, the hot springs, um, which are the last remnant of the activity of 1780. And the great lava dome, I think, left of that, in which the heat, is, um, the heat source is below that. And uh, this is the uh, remains of a bigger volcanic structure that is quite difficult to make out the form, the total form of it, but some large crater structure with a dome in the centre. As we dropped anchor in the harbor of Saint Pierre, Martinique, we thought of the rotting hulls of the numerous ships that lay on the bottom some hundred feet below us. The harbor must have looked something like this on that fateful day, May 8th of 1902, 
when the first pyroclastic flows came down the sides of the mountain. These are the first images of this phenomena ever captured on film over a hundred years ago. As the flows swept out over the sea, they set the ships on fire and sent them to the bottom. These stunning underwater images were captured by the crew of the Calypso on Jacques Cousteau's expedition to Martinique in the 1970s. The city of Saint-Pierre was totally engulfed in flames, killing over 29,000 inhabitants in the resulting firestorm. One man, by the name of Cyprus, did survive. He'd been thrown into solitary confinement the night before, and that is what saved his life. His survival in Burns led to his traveling in a sideshow of the Ringling Brothers Barnum Bailey Circus for the rest of his life. Okay. It sure gets quiet when you guys eat. No funding. This observatory was uh, sh shut in uh, 1924, and the new eruption was coming in 1929 with the old observatory. <laughs> and so it's after the eruption of, of 29 that uh, we have the money for building this uh, observatory, which uh, was opened in 1935. Jean-Pierre took us downstairs to show us the original instrument that measured the seismicity of Mount Pele. The problem record, recorder with small paper was here. And you can see here and here the two horizontal uh, paper. You can see I, I touch a little. Ah, maybe here. Oh, yeah. You can see. But uh, the magnification in this place was less than uh, at the middle here. So. That was for the P waves, was it? That would be the P waves, was it that? the S waves? Well, the P and wave uh, is more on the, seeing on the vertical ones, okay. and the S wave on the horizontal ones. You know also that uh, when we, we have only one seismometer, it is impossible to make a computation of an epicenter with uh, only one station. <laughs> but with uh, this station, with the S to P phase, the time between the two phases, it was possible to know the distance of the earthquake. And with the horizontal walls, it's possible to know the azimuth of the earthquake. Jean-Pierre took us on a rather rough ride up to the deposits. So Jean-Pierre, they're actually selling the deposits here, huh? Yes, they're selling the deposits, and uh, you'll see that the depth is uh, very, very important, about uh, more than uh, 25 to 30 meters deep. Would this all be pyroclastic flow or all some this, mud flow? All of this is only pyroclastic flow. Only pyroclastic yeah. flow. And how much deeper do you think it might be? I think that uh, there are more than 30 meters. Unbelievable. Uh, at the summit you can see the two domes. At, uh, at uh, right it is a 29 dome. And at left, the summit at left is a 902 dome. You can see completely at right and at on that left you can see the crater rim. The crater rim uh, is always existing on the east side, but on the west side the crater rim was destroyed by the eruption of uh, 902 and 29. Uh -huh. And at uh, the foot of the, door, uh, of the cone you can see the green hill. It's a uh, Mont Perret, in which Frank Perret stands for uh, looking to the pyroclastic flow in uh, 29. 
you think he felt he might be safe on that little hill? Yeah. He was a little burned one time. This <laughs> is like a little crazy. Huh? Yeah, I'll tell you. So where are we right now, uh, Jean-Pierre? So actually we go up and uh, when we were here we can see it, uh, if the weather is good or not, what we can do. We have a possibility to go on Mount Makuba, Caldera, and uh, from here we have a very nice sight on the, on the domes and on the caldera. And uh, we have also the possibility, if we have time, to, to go up and return uh, from the crater rim to go down later. All right, let's go. Okay, so we go. Okay. Well, we're here on a uh, ridge looking right up at Mount Pele, the crater rim and the clouds, and it's so easy to see from this vantage point how pyroclastic flows coming from the dome would have rushed at super speeds down the flanks of the volcano to the unsuspecting uh, town of Saint-Pierre, right down there in the harbor. Some 29,000 people killed in just two or three minutes. Okay, so now we we can go to the summit. We are going up on the dome of 902, and after this, we are going down to the crater rim and return to Mont La Croix on the other side, on the east side. Who all wants to go? Okay, so we go. Here, here. Okay. Clear before you go. Oh God! Can I can I kneel? <laughs> Sit down. Go down. Oh, we made it. <laughs> One of the highlights of our voyage was to become part of the crew on the beautiful sailing vessel Sir Robert Baden-Powell. It was not unusual to be accompanied by a friendly school of dolphin. So I need to know how many. 20 is the number, right? Are you thinking of walking with us? So let's figure on 21. Let's say 22. We'll actually go up, drive up. That That's worth it. So we'll figure on 22. Our first stop was the amazing Trafalgar Falls, where two waterfalls merge into one river. One of them's hot, and the other one is cold. Well, it's uh, Monday morning, somewhere around the 29th of uh, November, and we're about to head off for the 
Whirling Lake. Yeah. We're gonna go for two time uh, ride, huh? That's it. Two two loads? Yeah, yeah. go. Yeah, to the right, Mon Anglais, Englishman's Mountain, 3,750 feet. From the high seas to the boiling lake. Two thousand twenty, you got on your yeah. There was a real bad pulse. There's the, that's how much vertical we've done. Sixteen thirty. And the neighbor's house was just over there. You're looking at a warm waterfall. It's the outlet of the boiling lake, and uh, you could have a nice warm bath in there. Oh, way over, right? Yeah. Big shower. After hiking up and down a number of mountain ridges for two hours, we came to the Valley of Desolation. What do you think of this hike, Fasi? It's beautiful. Isn't it great? Aren't you glad you came, man? Yeah, man. Me too. Shot far too much pictures already. <laughs> it's an area filled with numerous fumaroles and boiling water. Well, here it is. This is what it's like to walk up onto the, uh, the boiling lake. here at the boiling lake and uh, found the softest place to sleep. <laughs> After filling himself on turkey and cheese and sandwiches and cookies, he decided to lay back just like Captain Karsten. <laughs> After our six hour hike, it was very refreshing to bathe in the cool spring waters at the bottom of the mountain. So guys, was it worth it? I know it was worth it for Fosse. Um, in order for this boat to go around to Point of Feet and fuel, it's all arranged. All he has to do is go in. He'll have an appointment. So you just pull in, fuel, the whole boat full of everything, and back here. But it's gonna, he's going to do the figure. He's going to figure now, but he thinks it's going to be eight or nine hours. So if we what? depart at five, then he's not going to get back here. If he leaves at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, 
two in the afternoon or so. We'll in the meantime have made our hike, drop the cars before noon, and then be on our own till the boat gets back. Then it was a drive up to meet with the director of the Guadeloupe Observatoire, Jean-Christophe Komorowski. I think that you're actually making the cruise that, that the, the, the Arabs and the Caribs did several times throughout their history. It's going up from one, one island to the next as the volcanoes were blowing up and going up uh, in, 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 you know, and erupting. And uh, it's, it's clear from the carbon-14 dating that there were eruptions during the time of occupation of all these islands by, by the, 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 the uh, Amerindians in this area. So um, the, uh, the eruptions in, in, the, in the last 3,000 years have been dominated by activity related to dome growth. Passive dome growth, explosive dome growth, very similar to what is going on in Montserrat for the last five years. The eruption in Montserrat uh, regroups in one small eruption with a relatively small volume of magma, which is large for the island, but very small in terms of andesitic volcanism, all the aspects of andesitic volcanism. That's why it's such a, a key eruption, because everything happens on a, on a very small scale, which is understandable and, and you can deal with uh, in terms of, of, of studying the deposits. When you go on the debris avalanche deposit of Mount St. Helens, you have um, two and a half cubic kilometers of material over, over hundreds of square kilometers. In Montserrat, it's 10 square kilometers, 15 square kilometers. You can deal with that. It's already very complicated. And those are phenomena that are hard to imagine. There was uh, an older volcanic arc there, are volcanic rocks in Antigua. The western part of Antigua has lots of cinder cones uh, and volcanic rocks that are quite old, perhaps 15 to 20 millions of, millions of years. And the old arc involved Antigua uh, below Grand Terre, below Marie Galante, a little bit below Desirade, and then uh, the eastern part of Matunica, and then further down St. Lucia and perhaps uh, Grenada. And, and then there was a more recent arc that developed probably as a result in, in change of either change of, of, of angle of the subduction or speed of subduction or, or just uh, some other uh, dynamic parameter in the subduction zone. And, um, and then the arc jumped uh, west and formed a recent arc, this question that there might be an intermediate arc. The rocks in the recent arc are about 5 million years of age, but there are rocks between uh, 5 and, and 20, so uh, with different uh, chemical characteristics. So this is the recent arc, and that's why the mountains are so large. And the uh, highest intensity of volcanic activity in terms of volume and frequency and magnitude of eruptions is Dominica. Mm -hmm. Put 10 potentially active volcanoes in, in Dominica. Could you just fill us in a little bit. We'll have no problem with Montserrat, but uh, St. Kitts, Nevis, Stacia, Sabo, uh, as far as anything happening up that way. I have very little information on those those islands. Uh, Nevis and St. Kitts have large stratovolcanoes similar to Sufria or Guadeloupe and, and Montserrat. Uh, larger constructs than, than in Montserrat. They were not active um, uh, recently, but they have, his, they have uh, uh, activity in the last 10,000 years, so they're considered active volcano, uh, volcanoes. Seba and St. Kitts have had earthquake swarms, and if you use the Montserrat model, which is that every earthquake swarm or large earthquake swarm might be uh, the incremental rise of the magma, viscous, plug-like, crystal-rich, um, silicic magma towards the surface or small volume of magma so that might represent the slow um, uh, rise of magma towards the surface and that might be the same case for, for Sufri or Guadeloupe. The ascent, Here we go. Here we go. The salt on Sufri or Guadeloupe. Ready to roll. Yeah. All right. <laughs> He's pointed his camera right at it. Dangerous gases. Please do not pass here. A whole different place up here. Rain, cold, wind, and uh, soon dangerous gases.
Well, we've reached the uh, summit, and now we're uh, going to go over to the fumaroles uh, where the dangerous gases are. Sounds like fun, huh? Academy Award for that one. <laughs> Not bad champagne. Though. And the chili. That's great. I'm going to get on the other side so I can have another slurp. Halfway. Oh, yeah. This is the halfway point. I can't believe that we're in the halfway point. We've only been going a week. And here we go. <laughs> to you. Wow. Here's to everybody. Amen. Heading down. Captain Karsten had made the eight hour trip to Point to Pete to refuel and to fill up with fresh water. He was back in time to pick us up at the pier. And after a great dinner, and some much-deserved sleep, we sailed for our home island of Montserrat. Looks a little strange. Okay, that was now. Let me get the other side. <laughs> okay, go. That's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, the observatory is, has been here two years now. We, we used to have a place um, further, further south down in Salem, um, but that, that was really got to the point and that, that area was evacuated, so every, we and everyone else had to move. Um, so, so this is a kind of hub of things where all the data are received. Um, a, a lot of the work is, is on kind of real-time data, which is, is mainly the seismics. Um, all, all the seismic information is telemetered back to the observatory. It went into more explosive phases. There was one, one explosion, uh, 17th of September 96, which uh, occurred at night. And then there was, um, um, we had, well, 12 explosions in August 97, which w went over a week or so. And then the next month, there was a very big collapse from the lava dome. And, and that, that was the one that destroyed the airport, actually. And, and then after that, we had 75 explosions when occurring in a month, which is, was quite an amazing thing to, to live through, really. Um, you know, with these things, 75 in a month, so you're getting between two and three a day. I mean, it was, it was really pretty, pretty wild time. We went to Richmond Hill, and then if it looks okay, we might be able to just go down a little bit with farther into the Delta area where you can see town from, from above. But that's just a very special thing, so. We'll get a better view from the top looking down. Okay, Karsten. Uh, Everybody's having a great time here. We're going to take a little walk and look down into uh, Plymouth, and uh, we'll get back to you around 5 o'clock on Channel 16. We're out here. Only aerial views can give one a real idea of the incredible amount of material that had been erupted from our volcano and then remobilized by the rains to flow down over our beautiful city. As we pass by the war memorial, we can see the remains of O.R. Kelsitz up ahead. It sat on the northeast corner of George and Parliament Streets, known to old-timers as Grandstand. It was the crossroads of the community, and if you sat there long enough, you were sure to see just about everybody in Montserrat over the course of a day. Further up George Street, on the lower right, you see the roof of Dyer's store, and to the left, the one remaining spire of the St. Patrick's Catholic Church, one of the most beautiful and historic structures in Montserrat. Goodbye to Montserrat! El Geronimo. Oh, the good dive. Okay. Okay, thank you. What was the depth of the water? How deep? 25. After our stop in Redonda, we set sail for Nevis. Okay, here's what uh, Karsten and I were talking about, and we, we need to get here okay uh, as far as this one added attraction. 
Um, we're going to go into Nevis tonight. In fact, we're almost into Charlestown. Uh, we would go in and check in early and try to get together the uh, trip up to the mountain. Michael has been there and uh, he can tell you about it, but we go around to Gingerland and drive up, 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 and get out and uh, he thinks it's a couple hours to the summit and it's a big crater. Then we would sail the couple miles over to St. Kitts that evening, tomorrow evening. And in St. Kitts, uh, we probably would spend the first day, do Brimstone Hill, anything else that we could see, and arrange for the climb uh, Wednesday morning. And then depart, and it's not that far to Stacia. I mean, you can see from Brimstone Hill, you can see right out the door, the cannon pointing right at Stacia and Seba right there. So they're not too far apart. We drove up to begin our ascent of Nevis, the most difficult climb of our entire journey. What do you have on your altimeter right here, uh, uh? 1,020. 1,020? We're going to be okay here. We're really in the thick of it now, at about oh, yeah, 1,500 okay. feet, starting to pour down rain, okay, and we got to go up this thing in a rope. Okay, come on. A little tougher climb than we thought. This is the second rope climb coming up a steep cliff. Right in. Right a crew. Another steep one down there. Another rope. I think we hear you key in the mic. Uh, we're at uh, 2,000 feet, and what time is it? 204. 2.04. It's 2.04. We're at 2,000 feet. We're going to continue on, and uh, keep in mind that it gets dark and no moon. So we'll uh, we'll get back to you and hope that we can get line of sight soon. Uh, out. Okay, we're at 25. Uh, 25.50 and we're going to split into two groups. About six are going to start back down and another six are going to go on up. So um, we'll probably take two hours to get down so we'll contact you in another hour or so. Okay Sarge, we're out uh, on 16. Uh, we just emerged into a clearing and uh, see our landmarks. Seven of us have come down this far, and the others are hopefully descending now. There's a rainbow, that's a good sign. The climb from hell. George, why'd you wear your good pants up there, man? Well, I thought we were going on an easy Sunday hike. <laughs> <laughs> With a yeah. nice stairway. <laughs> yeah, you told me on the last volcano that they were all going to get easier from me and on. <laughs> All right, our heroes. Careful, it's slippery, slippery. Ziggy sliding down. Yeah. How, how much longer did it take? How much? 3,200 feet at the top. Really? So it was the peak. Yeah, it was the very top. And there was a register up there with a pad to sign. <laughs> and some extra water bottles and a can of beans. Ah, oh, that's good. And our hero made the top, man. This was our leader. <laughs> yeah, fearless leader. <laughs> it was hard from that place. It was pretty much ropes all the way. I can't believe it. <laughs> Ziggy and his oh. best climbing outfit, best man. Yeah. Yes, yes sure. <laughs> Do you want to see the other side? <laughs> Shall I show you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's have a look. After climbing. <laughs> Great, you did, you did good, man. You did good. 
Yeah. There's a dirty bunch coming from that peak right up there. Do you let me in? Yeah, I let you in. <laughs> Silhouetted with the mountain in the background. You were just standing right up there on that peak, Michael. Yeah. You believe it? We want to present to those that are leaving a certificate for what you have achieved so far. <laughs> They're pretty wild certificates. They have a beautiful picture of the ship, all the islands, and they read like this. It certifies, in your case, that Gustav, party animal Ulrich, <laughs> has successfully climbed the following volcanoes during the voyage of the Sir Robert Baden-Powell to the 11 volcanoes of the Caribbean. And it's got a check mark there with the official stamp and the sign of Captain Karsten and uh, myself and Sonny. And I would have had them laminated, but we, don't, we aren't to the end of the trip. You could have got another dollar's worth of, it, of, of stuff if you'd have waited till the end. But try to keep that uh, someplace where it won't be damaged on the way home. Uh, and to John Dow Jones Colvin, who can tell you any place on the mountain what the Dow Jones is at. Uh, and, and Jack or John, that's your certificate of achievement. And the last but not least, for those that are leaving tomorrow, Susan Wormtail Novak. That's me! Yes. And she has really done well up until today. Oh, up until today. <laughs> and I'm glad you didn't come today because vertical mud is not really what you oh, need to be man, doing today. It's all right. That's so all right. show that to your husband. And all those that are still going to climb St. Kitts, Saba, and Stacia, you'll be inspired to know you're getting one of these. The 13th, 1999, the voyage of the volcanoes of the Carib, and it has everybody's signatures on it. That is incredible. I will treasure that. The first one. That is the first one. After a visit to the beautiful capital city of Bastier, we headed for the amazing Brimstone Hill. Today we climb uh, St. Kitts. It's a gorgeous day, and the mountains are clear over there. So we're off, heading out. We didn't uh, drive up any further. Oh, you've lost uh, Jesse. He's hiding. 
Yeah, not to be seen. But what is going to happen is that you like you inside of it. It's like you're doing between like probably let's say between seven, eight hundred feet from the top. Where are we going to be going? You're going to be doing like seven, eight hundred feet to get yeah. to the bottom of that. Is there a lake? Yeah, there is a big lake inside of it. There's a huge one. You're just going to have a good... Is it warm? Or yes, cold? In cold in some places. Not but warm. it's not heated from the volcano. It's no. a natural water uh, yeah. catch. What's the altimeter, Tom? Say that again. Really? So how high do you think that thing up there is? I can see it here. We're here on the uh, side of the spine, uh, around 3,600 feet I imagine. There's another 100 feet above us. In St. Kitts, looking into the crater. And it's pretty impressive with the lake old uh, area of fumaroles and, and uh, sulfur over on the left and this gigantic uh, crater rim around us. Definitely worth the climb and for me it was one of the best uh, and we're on a very very clear day. Our guide said it was unusually clear and we're very fortunate. What did you say Joe? <laughs> There's a view over there? Uh, yeah right where that little shelf is you can see the entire lake and you can see the uh, rim and the sofa. So you just have to oh. sort of jump over there? Oh, you can just walk, but it's oh, okay. very close around this, around this uh, corner here. That's all. I guess you don't want to slip off that little... No. Well, we're starting down. And uh, it was one of the better, better journeys. Right, Jeff? Yep. <sighs> What's that over there? Look at that. And it's just one o'clock. Huh? <laughs> Is that enough? No. No. <laughs> you want to stick a gun? <laughs> Dad. <laughs> After sailing over 500 kilometers on our volcano voyage, we neared the island of St. Eustatius, better known to locals as Statia. Some of our most enjoyable days were the ones that we spent on the high seas. sailing between the exotic islands of the Caribbean. Crater Rim. All right. Well, we're at the tenth volcano on our volcano cruise. Uh, about 300 feet down here, but I can look up about five or 600 feet to the crater rim, all the way around me. Maybe a half a mile across, and uh, gosh, eight or nine hundred feet deep from the highest to the bottom. A little overcast up above us, but. Uh, Quite an interesting hike, a very easy hike compared to the others. A nice, mild trail. So it's onward to the last of the uh, volcanoes on our volcano voyage, Seba.
steps were built in 1968, 68, 69. It comes up very clear. 2280, catching up a little. Well, we've made it to the 11th volcano on the voyage of the Sir Robert Baden Powell to the 11 volcanoes of the Caribbean. We've reached the peak here. We've climbed about 25,000 feet between all the volcanoes. Everybody's safe and sound and victorious. We made it. And we drink except all we have is water. Our last stop was the island of St. Bart's for a beach party and champagne goodbyes on board the Sir Robert. Could be sitting here 200 years ago. Yes, that was right. great. Yeah. Oh. Have you got that old sound? No. Oh. <laughs> Is fantastic. <laughs> right with the sunset. Let's take another one, David. In this section over here, we have a little gift from all those participants. Gonna have to take the traveler's checks and all. <laughs> Make sure that it's dispersed. <laughs> no, they'll get a night out on the town tonight. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> Carson can probably change the, there's a few hundred things there. <laughs> well, <Good>. thanks. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Wow, man. Jose, it's the least we for the Thank you, everybody. For the state, to be serious. But strictly by accident. Very good. For the non-speech. Me? Big speech. Right, right. Speech. And very patient. <laughs> well, if there's one thing I'm bad in, it's speech stuffing. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Um, three weeks, um, lots of up and downs. <laughs> I believe also for me, I mean, sometimes, I mean, for everybody, sometimes everybody is tired, or, uh, sometimes not everything, but in the end, wow, well, I found this incredible trip. All the people, everybody, everybody's own character, and yeah. I hope you enjoyed. To you. Thank you. Let me click a glass here. It was here. a very memorable and most enjoyable cruise. <laughs> Enjoy the trip, Brian. Yeah, great trip. Yeah. Good to have you with us. Corinne, Corey. It was a great trip and I really enjoyed it and I'm much fitter at the end of it. Thank you. Our Energizer Bunny. Mary, the maximum diver. Yeah, I really enjoyed the diving. Nevis was absolutely terrific. Really Redonda was good too, man. Huh? Redonda, that was a really good. Oh one. yeah, Redonda. Yeah, where we had to leap off the boat in the <laughs> evening and take the waves. And Thank God you had your little flag with you, because we'd have never found you. <laughs> Tom, you enjoy it? Yeah, great climbs, great sailing, great group, great That's organization it. on your part. Thank you, buddy. Wonderful trip. George. Hi. I'm going, I'm going back to Saber. <laughs> He's going back to Saber. Michael. Very good, David. Yeah, it was a gas. <laughs> Barrel, did you have a good time? It was great. Great sailing, great volcanoes. David, I know you Wish did. Wish it wasn't ending. The only thing we didn't fix was the weather on Montserrat. Yeah, that's true. But, but if there's any place to get marooned, that was a good place. Uh, that was, that was a, a nice time on Montserrat, too meeting your friends. Yeah, boy. We were really treated nice by volcanologists. My God, I forgot about Jean-Pierre. Michael? Yeah, we achieved everything I set out to do, and I don't think there's any other way we could have done it. Uh, That's so, true. Yeah, great time. Yeah. Andy got through his cold. 
I meet the new friends, the Caribbean reef sharks. Elizabeth, <laughs> <laughs> you have a good time? Yes, very much. It was, it was great. It was good to see you guys yes. again too, the both of you. Zig. And now me. Well, it was my third trip, but this one was unique. <laughs> <laughs> he never walks at home, you know. He doesn't walk at no. home. Even I never walk, I prefer diving of course, but this time we had not, not so many chances, so I do hope the next time we'll be we, more diving. Uh, we thought about throwing in a little money and buying your pair of boots. <laughs> no need. A new pair of shorts maybe. <laughs> for, for serious mountains I will wear shoes, but not, not for volcanoes in the Caribbean. <laughs> You are the most likely. Rob, it was great and uh, it was good to get to know you. And You just sort of jumped on the boat in the Canaries or Tenerife? Or? No, I joined the boat um, before the crossing. Yeah. And I came across the Atlantic and it's been really great. My first charter, met a lot of people. Uh, and even some special people. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> a little bit more to volcanoes than I thought. <laughs> Boss, you already had your speech, man. <laughs> Carolyn, David, it was good to have you. It was and I hope nice you sell your car pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Pay for all those travelers Someday. checks. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse, you joined late, but how was it? Great. Yeah. What was your favorite part? Getting thrown overboard by the cook? Probably. <laughs> and Sonny, oh, he's on camera. Here we are. Oh. Yeah. You were on the whole trip, climbed every volcano. Did you enjoy it? That was wonderful. Glad you came? Very glad. I'm glad you came too. Yeah. Who else is there? We got everybody? Uh oh. Olga? Hi. Oh, I can't do it from that side. Okay. Olga! <laughs> you enjoy the diving? Is this your first time in the Caribbean? Not the first, but the first since 12 years. Has but very nice. You enjoyed it. And I like your new haircut today. I don't know how you did that while I was gone. but It's very nice. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Karsten. This was a very interesting and I, I always nice trip. I'll tell you. I enjoyed very much uh, uh, the Caribbean from a very different side than I'm used to. Normally we only do our dive trips and now we saw a lot of the country, a lot of the nature and a lot of nice people. I would take care of this because I, I really seriously doubt if anybody's going to sail the Caribbean and do the 11 mountains again. I, I don't, I've never heard of such a thing. And uh, we're not going to probably do it again. This goes to Robert, better known to you locals as Rob, Engine Room Harrison. And here is your certificate of achievement. That's the first time I've seen him with his hair down. I can't believe it. First time. He, he's let his hair down tonight. Where is Akim? Akim Cookie Serzwinski. Nice Irish name. And it has an asterisk there. It says, forced to stay in kitchen. So none of your boxes are checked. <laughs> you were forced to never leave the ship. And to Fosse Babyface Fontaine. Babyface. Who did uh, a few of those volcanoes. And Holgar Fathomless Pullman. Who I think did you just do Dominica? Yes. Just Dominica. We're working up to the big ones. John Silent but Deadly Ackroyd, who did St. Kitts. One other one, John? St. Kitts, okay. Karsten Mon Capitan Borner, who did uh, Grenada St. Lucia Martinique, Montserrat. We gave him Montserrat, I think, just because he's the captain. He did drive us, yeah. He drove us a little. Uh... So the composite of the crew of the Sir Robert Baden Powell did between them did Grenada, Martinique, Dominica, St. Kitts, Montserrat, and St. Eustatius. That goes on the ship. Also give that to Captain Karsten. I think it should have a place on the wall to remember this cruise. 
to Burl Wild Woman Bar. I didn't make up all these names myself. I had a little help. Some of those have asterisks. To Mary, oh, Mary 100 Fathom Richards, who did partial climbs about every place and did a lot of good diving. To Elizabeth Diving Widow Munch. <laughs> Do you know what that means? We tried to come up with a name for you and we all saw you like looking out over the rail towards the dive boat, waiting for Ziggy to come home. She did really good. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven volcanoes under her belt, under her diving belt. Andreas Bathing Beauty Korber, Andy. <laughs> who never got a tan. <laughs> we noticed that you were in the sun, Andy, all the time. You were in the sun all the time, but you never got any tan. We don't understand that. To Carolyn Nets Volkers, uh, she's got quite a few marks on hers there, too. Siegfried Mudman Munch. <laughs> And it's got an asterisk here. He got to 2770 on Nevis with his sandals. That's pretty good. <laughs> and to Mike Bad Hair Day Bar is Grenada St. Vincent with an asterisk. That's an almost. And St. Lucia, Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe, Montserrat. And then he skipped a couple. St. Lucia and Seba. I don't know what happened there in the middle. Sonny, second camera, Lee. He's got all of them except an asterisk on Nevis at 2550. Didn't quite make the top there, but he got almost all of them. Brian, rock knocker, Martin, an asterisk at 2550. He made them all. Corrine, energizer, Bunny, Martin. Same thing, 25.50. She just keeps going and going and going. To George, laundry man, all rich. He has an asterisk at 27.70, set apart from the rest. He almost made Nevis, everything else. And guess what? The first to make every volcano, all the way to the top. Thomas, Mr. Pig's Prather. Yes. Oh <laughs> Another one of those. I think we should give one. Those guys really did. They never turned back. Michael, Mountaineer Nun, made everyone no asterisk, clean as slate as you can get. And to David Smiley Turner, <laughs> always has a smile on his face, another complete 11 volcanoes. If he could have done Redonda, he would have. If you'd like to donate to this project and help us out with the work we've done, or any of the things we've done over the years concerning the eruption of the Sufra Hills, go to priceofparadise.com. You'll find all the information there.